Welcome to the Legacy Billiards Pool Table Construction Video. To better serve you, we have created the following video to assist you with the construction and assembly of Legacy Billiards products. In it, you will find detailed assembly training for our tables, including the integration of our new Perfect Corner. You will also learn tips and helpful tools to help you understand Legacy Pool Tables and products and better serve your customers. The methods used in this video are here to help your store and your customers, so please use it as a guide to follow when assembling tables for display and for customer delivery. Before you start to set up the table, carefully open the provided hardware kit and make sure all the necessary hardware is included. Keep the hardware in the provided tray as it is organized for easy access and ready for each specific step of table assembly. Several tools are required to correctly assemble a billiard table. Some are common tools and some are special to the trade. A good quality staple gun and level are essential specialty tools that a professional installer will use to achieve proper installation. As long as the tools provide accuracy and professional results, the assembly will be completed correctly. Begin by introducing yourself to the customer and asking them what pathway they would prefer the product be brought into their home. Before unloading, make sure that the pathway is unobstructed in order to safely bring the product into the house. Please remember, when lifting heavy objects, always use proper lifting techniques. Upon bringing the product into the room, take your time and unpack each item from the box and place it carefully around the room. Once all the product is unpacked, Collect the boxes and discard them so that you have a safe and accessible workspace for comfortable assembly. So the first thing you would do when you you'd come in the house is you take your four corners and you'd set them on the floor. Now the significant thing of these corners is the fact that the, the leg plate is attached to the corner itself, making this all one piece. So no measurements need to be taken. No, you don't need to do any flushing adjustment. You simply just bolt the panels into the corners and your measurements are done. Your cabinet is, 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 is squared and leveled, flush. So we're gonna set this up now. We'll set this apart. We're gonna set our panels in quite simply. All the way down, we'll take the long panel, slide it in as well. They slide down very easily. Take this other side. Slide this in as well and just make sure everything is, is squeezed together. And that gives us the shape of the, of the tapered cabinet and that gives us the corner. If everything is resting on the plate and everything is tight to the corner, we'll just insert our bolts and tighten them and, and the basic shape and, and structure will be done. All right, one important thing to note on our hardware is that we apply Teflon to the threads of the bolts. And the reason we do that is so that when they are secured and tightened, they don't vibrate loose or work loose. And so that's an important feature to, to, to know that Legacy does. The, the, only, uh, the only critical thing about that is when they are tightened, uh, you need to go ahead and run them down. Don't tighten them part way with a speed drill and then do any other work on the table and expect to come back. As this Teflon loosens, from heat, from being applied, it will then set itself and it just needs to be done in one motion. So when you put these in, I'm putting them in very loosely uh, in order to, to get all of my, my, my bolts started and then I'll use the power drill to tighten everything up. Once I get them all in, go ahead and tighten them up. Once the cabinet's at this point, just to show that the corners allow for the cabinet to be square, we'll do a cross measurement on one side, and then we'll measure the other, and they both will be exactly equal so that we know that this cabinet is already squared. And again, that's what the perfect corner provides for us, is, is, a, is a squared and flushed cabinet. Again, these panels from, from the end panel to the side panel are perfectly flush, and we just don't have to do any adjustment. So that's the biggest advantage, and it saves so much time in the assembly for, for this type of table and this, sty this style. We take the provided hardware, this, this all thread, and we insert it into the fortress power lock built into this leg. That's a T-nut that's inserted in the bottom of this plug. We just insert it by hand and we just run it all the way down to the bottom. 
There's no need to wrench this down or snug this any more than what, what is provided there by, by our factory specification. So you run that all the way down and that'll give us the strength we need to secure that leg. At this point, we're just uh, securing the legs on underneath the cabinet. We'll do that on all four legs and then we'll come back and we'll make the leg adjustments and then tighten them down. So right now we're just trying to get the legs applied to the table. All right, we use a 9 16 wrench that we'll tighten this leg hardware up with. And I'll show you the placement of the leg that is, that's correct and consistent. We slide the leg out, we position the leg out from the corner of the table so that the outer circumference of the leg is about three eighths of an inch inside the, uh, the leg plate. Once that is placed correctly, just simply tighten the hardware. All right, these are just simply inserted into the mitered grooves for these cross members. Using a three inch wood screw, the holes are pre-drilled through the outside of the cabinet. You just want to ensure that these cross members are flush with the top of the, of the cabinet. Okay, that completes the cabinet assembly. Now because we don't have the slate on the table yet, which will allow the outside of this table to grow, and then the rails will be secured on top of that, the play field approximately comes right across these leveling braces. So this is the edge of the play field. So for the sake of that, we want to again allow ourselves 60 inches. Uh, we also then want to, to grow that, so we're going to say 62 inches as a minimum measurement to the edge of this cabinet. And then what is most critical is to get the customer's approval of the position of the table. Once the table will be positioned in the room, we're going to go through the leveling process under the feet and level this cabinet, and then the table can't be moved. Certainly when we bring the slate in, the weight of it will warrant not moving it either. So make sure you get the customer's permission on where that table is to belong before you go any further. The first step you do is you want to just check your your floor and we're going to find out what what adjustments we need to do and what we're looking for is we're looking for the highest corner of this table and everything else will be lifted correctly to match the highest corner and the reason for that is is that you always want one at least one leg on the floor it's critical that this table be the correct height as uh, the, the, the play field be the correct height. So by keeping one leg on the floor is, 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 the perf is, is close to perfect as we can get it. Okay, we've determined we're gonna need some shims underneath that leg right there. So I'm gonna lift this carefully. Okay. Make sure those are hidden and out of the way. We're gonna need to add two more. Okay. Perfect. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're putting the center piece on first because this will allow us to square it, center it on this cabinet as best as possible and then secure it down. Once it's secured down, then the end pieces will just simply butt up to it and you'll just secure those. So the center piece is the most critical to get placed correctly. All legacy slate screws that, that we use to secure the slate have a self-tapping head on them. Um, and we do this to, to help seat the screw into the wood every time that it's uh, every time it's secured in that said it's always a good idea to pre-drill the holes well with a with a 3 16 size drill bit because again it's wood and just to eliminate any chance of cracking we we recommend that you do a pre-drill so i'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these blocks right now Now we've got this piece centered, it's secured down, we're ready for the end pieces, we'll just simply butt them up, pre-drill our holes, secure that down, and we're ready to uh, level slate.